everybody and welcome to another episode from Holsingersflyshop.com. I'm your host Sean Holsinger and I'm bringing you another tying video today. Today in my video I'm tying something a little bit different. I'm tying a dragonfly nymph. Um, we have some dragonflies in our area. Well there's a lot in the ponds and stuff but there's one stream in particular in my area that has a lot of them in the stream and I see a lot of nymphs on it every year. And I know that there's nobody fishing dragonfly nymphs on that stream, so I'm dying to try it this year. So I've been watching, trying to see a, fa a pattern that I like, that I wanted to try. And uh, I'm not sure who it was. Somebody posted some pictures on Instagram of one that I thought was really cool. And uh, I looked at the pattern, thought what I needed to do, how I needed to tie it, and what I had that I could use. And this was what I come up with. And it matches their pattern, but I'm sure it doesn't match their material list. And that's the important thing. When you see something that you want to tie, you see a pattern for it, you don't need exactly what that pattern calls for. You know, unless you're trying to re recreate some Carrie Stevens streamer pattern from a hundred years ago or whatever that you want to hang in a, you know, a little glass case on your wall, you don't need to imitate exactly. The thing is, is you need to do what you need to do to catch fish. That's what's important. The fish don't care if it's a different color, if it's a different shade, as long as it's close. And that's what's important here. So, that's what I did on this dragonfly. I figured out what I needed to do to tie it and found the materials I needed. And it ended up looking pretty cool. So let's get into tying it. Here's a picture of it and the material list to tie. Okay, here you see the fly in the vise. It's a pretty cool looking fly. There's a few techniques that may be new to you, and uh, if they are, that's great. You're going to learn something today. But let's get into tying it. We're tying it on a fire hole 718. And, um, like, you know, you see me tie a lot on these hooks because it just gives it a buggy, natural look to it. I like using them a lot. And, uh, there it is in the vise, and now the next thing I'm going to do is put my thread on. For thread, I'm using light olive 70 denier. And we're just going to start it on there, and about the middle, we're going to wrap it back towards the bend. Okay, once I get back there, the next thing I'm going to put on is some grizzly marabou and olive. This is uh, little stuff, it's little feathers, it's kind of like chickaboo feathers and they tend to run small so if you get if they're not a real thick feather like these I, I'm going to use two of them, you can see how thin that is I'm going to use two of them to give it just a little bit more body and we're just going to tie these on back here at the bend and I want the length to be about the length, a little bit shorter than the length of the hook. So I like that there. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of crystal flash to this. And uh, there we go. Have a piece laying here on the bench. I'm going to put one strand of crystal flash on it, but I'm going to bend it in half. So I put the two tips together. You can use two if you want to, but. And then I'm just going to wrap it on the side closest to me. Make two or three wraps here to wrap it into place. Then I'm going to wrap it around the other side, making sure I get them on opposite sides of the hook. And then just trim that off. It's kind of like a, kind of like I do with a woolly bugger. And there you go. You see I have two going down each side. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my thread up here behind the eye. And I'm going to put on bead chain eyes, and they come in a chain, you can see the chains here, and I'll cut two of them off to make like a little set of dumbbells. And I'm going to sit them on top, and I'm going to tie them down. Now, you got to tie these down, you got to crisscross back and forth over them. Make like figure X over them, and do whatever you can to just wiggle your thread around, because you'll see there, they'll roll over on you. So try to do whatever you can to lock them in place 
And then you can always, I'm going to bring my thread back here to the back. You can always take and put a little dab of like Sol Res Bone Dry. That works real great. Um, or just a little bit of super glue. We'll hold it in place. But I like to use something that's going to dry real fast and not make me sticky or anything like that. So I'm going to put a little bit of bone dry on there. Hit it with my light. And that will help to lock it in place. Now the next thing I'm going to do... I'm a urine nipper. I like to have heavy flies. I like to be weighted. So I'm going to put a little bit of lead on here. And it will build up a little bit of body too. But I don't want a whole lot. So I'm just going to use .015 lead. This is more for weight than body. So I'm going to cover this up with lead. And tear my tag ends off here. And then I'm going to cover that lead up so it doesn't slide around. It's not going to slide around much because it's on that thread underneath it. But just make some nice wraps and get that covered up. Next thing, we're going to put on a piece of ribbing. Now you could use crystal flash here if you want. That would probably make a nice flashy ribbing. I'm going to use some brassy gold. I'm going to use brassy sides so it's a little bit bigger and it becomes visible. Whoops. That always sucks when you unravel your spool of wire. Anyhow, get that on there again. That'll make the outtakes video for some time later, I guess. Anyhow, we're going to tie this on and tie it in here back to the tail. And I'm going to wrap it up the side there. I usually tie things on my side because I see it and I can control it better. Next thing, I'm going to bring back to the tail again and we're going to put some dubbing on. Dubbing I'm using is Squirrel Dubbing from SLF and this is Green Olive. This is the color I found to be pretty close. I could actually get even a little bit more brown, like a brown olive, but... I think this was pretty close to the ones that I have seen in my area. So I'm just going to wet this or wax it however you prefer to put your dubbing on. And get a nice dubbing noodle on there. And we're just going to wrap this forward. And I'm going to wrap it about halfway up to those dumbbell eyes. Okay, there we go. And now I'm just going to rib this. Okay, give me a, just a little extra golden flash in there is what I'm doing. And a nice ribbed body. So we're going to wrap that down. Helicopter that off. Next thing I'm going to do is use a piece of Highland Green pheasant tail. And I'm going to cut, oh, about eight or so fibers off of here. And this is going to make a wing case on my fly. So I'm going to tie this with the bottom side of the feather sticking up. The bottom side is always darker. You can see. The bottom side is going to stick up and I'm going to tie it point to the front and I'm going to tie it in about halfway. And I'm going to start out with a loose loop, loose wrap, and then I'm going to wrap it back to that dubbing there. And then we're going to trim this off. Okay, and we're going to add some more dubbing. Okay, now I need to be this to be a little bit thicker, so we're going to go a hair thicker but not overbearing because we still want to. This is a this is not a mayfly, this is not a, a skinny nymph, this is actually a pretty fat nymph, but don't overdo it. You never want to overdo it. You want to keep proportions. Okay, so we're just going to wrap this up towards the eye, and I'm going to stop. There you go. I'm going to stop a little, just a hair before the eyes. Now we're going to pour a wing case up to the eyes. And I'm going to wrap that down right behind the eyes. And a lot of times I'll take and 
wrap it down right in front of the eyes too just to tie it off so I didn't accidentally snip something I shouldn't now I'm gonna come back behind the eyes and I'm gonna put some legs on this fly for legs I'm using a Cockdaleon saddle feather and this one is a well let me get the exact color for you it is speckled fluorescent chartreuse but um, any kind of green feather you have or even brown feather this is a soft tackle the Cockdaleon hand saddles is a soft tackle and it works real great for legs so I'm going to peel one side of that feather off and I'm going to make a clump out of it and I am going to put it angling down right behind those eyes and I'm going to tie it into place okay and it's going to stick out there like gills or legs on this fly then I'm going to come around with the other side I'm going to whoops, take the other side fibers off of that feather shaft and I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side so I'm going to bunch them all up and I'm going to hold them on the side and I'm going to tie them into place right behind those eyes okay then we're going to come in and trim this off and there you can see I got my legs on this fly okay it wasn't I, I kind of probably made it easier than it might look but it's not real real hard you just hold them down to the side and wrap them on into place last thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit more dubbing we're going to make the head on this fly and we're going to blend those eyes into the body so just dub that same olive dubbing that we've been using I'm going to get a little bit tighter on this one than I did on the last round there and then we're just going to zigzag over those eyes, making sure I get it completely covered, top and bottom, underneath there. So it's all nice and smooth around those eyes. And then once we get right up in front, we're just going to finish it off like that. Hit it with a whip finish. And we are done. You have an awesome looking little dragonfly. Dragonfly nymph, I should say. So there you go, nothing to it. Okay, I hope you liked the pattern as much as I did, and I had a lot of fun tying it. It's neat to sit down and figure something out on your own and tie it and come up with it. And that was the case for this fly here, trying to figure out what somebody else had done. And, uh, you know, give things a try. Like I said earlier, play around with the colors. Maybe you have a little bit darker one or a lighter one in your area if you tend to see them. And uh, just have fun time. That's what it's all about. Play around. Figure out a different way to do it. Let me know if you figure out a different way to do it. And uh, help everybody out. So, anyhow, any of the materials you need to tie, you can find it at wholesingersflyshop.com, as always. And uh, give us a thumbs up. If you like this video, you know, help us out. Give it a thumbs up. It'll shoot it up the view. Shoot up the views on YouTube, and that helps me out. And check out our other social media aspects like Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget about our Bugs and Beard page. And, you know, the Bugs and Beard page is still up and running. We're going to have some more podcasts coming out to you here shortly. And uh, we enjoy doing that. So have fun. Keep tying tight lines, and until next time, guys, I'm Sean Holsinger.